As we all know, Chicago's been founded by immigrants, and that has been always the key of the history of our great city has been immigrants, and that we're very proud of that. We're proud of it uh, in the past, present, and the future. And when you bring immigrants into the city and you have younger people moving throughout the Midwest into, into our city, it shows you the great commitment that people have in regards to the future of the city of Chicago. And you have to have a strong core of the city. Yeah, the core has to be strong. If you go around uh, to, the, uh, to the, the country, most cities fail. They never had a strong core. It failed. And people continually moved out of all these great cities. And you see what's happening today. Today it's different because you have both immigrants and younger people moving to the city. So you have a combination uh, of people who really want to live in the city and make a difference. And each and every one of you have truly made a difference. And here at this wonderful uh, this wonderful uh, uh, factory here, uh, the owner, uh, 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 Redvin uh, Targill, Tar 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 and uh, uh, Eastern Accents and Belmont Home Decor. Uh, he employs 190, 191 people. He's creating another 100 jobs for the next five years. It, manufacturing has always been the backbone of our city and our country. And I have already said that we can compete with anyone in returning. Uh, I spent about two and a half weeks in China. And, and remember, uh, the, the manufacturing needs water. Manufacturing new, needs a, a quality workforce, and we have it right here. And I'm very proud of all those that who are manufacturers. And if you look at it, it's always immigrants who have become manufacturers. The third generation of immigrants have left manufacturing. And so you always need new, new immigrants to come in and new people to come in to take over manufacturing. All of our business schools do not teach manufacturing. You know that in America. So we wonder where we are in manufacturing. And it's simple. We don't teach it. We, we don't encourage people to go into manufacturing, be owners of manufacturing. And it has been one of the problems for the last 25 years. And so now we have immigrants and others coming in throughout. And we have countries who want to invest in, in, in manufacturing. And we should allow them to invest in manufacturing in America because it will employ more and more people in America in the workforce. And, and uh, that is the key. And so this is an example of everyone coming together in regards to uh, providing hope for the future of this wonderful company and, and to do business with the city and have some form of campus development in, in creating, uh, in order to keep good paying manufacturing jobs, the city uh, sold an 89-year-old one-story brick building to this company for reduced cost. And we did that. It's public knowledge. We did that because we want to keep manufacturing here. Uh, they had previously rehabbed the primary facility at 4201 West Palma, built in a 60,000 square foot addition at the south end of the parcel. The sale completed a campus development which Eastern Accent now owns and has improved all the property along Belmont from Trip Avenue uh, west to the, the Milwaukee Avenue Road, a railroad and south to Berry Avenue, which is really important. They truly have a manufacturing campus, and you have to think about campuses. There has to be parking, it has to be good for the environment, and it has to be a safety factor because many times they run shifts 24 hours, seven days a week, and so a lot of manufacturing does that. In order to compete, we have to keep manufacturing in America, in our cities as well, and that is the key. And there are many success stories of the 31st and the 30th ward, and it requires good cooperation. You have to have cooperation of your elected officials. You have to have cooperation of the community. And that doesn't mean there be differences of opinion. But in the long run, eventually you have to come up with a decision. You just can't argue about the uh, sake of arguing without ever coming up with a decision. And that's one thing I think all of us have decided to do. You have to execute the plans that you have. And all the debate you have, eventually you have to come to some conclusion and say, let's move forward. Uh, and that is the success, I think, that you're elected officials, block clubs, community groups have made uh, this city in the last uh, 22 years a city that respects the past, understands the present, but is always looking to the future. And the future is the key. You have to have vision about that future and where we'll be in regards to uh, our great city. When I took office in 1989, it just seems a few years ago, uh, I, I, I've always said that Chicago was divided, Beirut on the lake, and you heard all that, and was really, it was really unfortunate, a bunch of politicians arguing, that's all it was, you know that, and uh, for the sake of the media, and instead of really uh, quieting your voices down and said, let's, let's all work together, um, we maybe have different ethnic groups, racial, religious uh, groups, uh, different political opinions, in the long run, if you don't move your city, your city deteriorates, and it deteriorates from the soul as well as from the body and, and that's what you were seeing and so in 89 I think we all quieted our voices and said let's roll up the sleeves let's really move this this whole city forward 
and it's like a big puzzle. You do something in northwest side or the west side or near west side or far south side. It's a big puzzle. You start putting things together. And this is part of the puzzle as well because as you do that, uh, then you start connecting and you start connecting uh, one community to another community. It's all part of this whole great city. And this weekend, I went to Ogden School in the near north, uh, near north side. Families there want to send their kids to public school, building a brand new school uh, on, uh, out in the uh, southeast side. We built a brand new uh, library. And then in 20 seconds, we dedicated a new CTA uh, facility. And that is really important because it's all these things are all part of a puzzle. And infrastructure is the key. And I want to thank uh, 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 the people of Chicago because we build our infrastructure with our own money. If we waited for the state and federal government, we'd be waiting for the next 25 years. There's no money for schools, no money for roads, and no money for infrastructure. And infrastructure built America. After the Second World War, you paid to build J uh, Japan and Germany, taxpayers did. So why, if after the Second World War, we rebuilt those two countries, and today we cannot rebuild our country? And that is a dilemma we're, we're fighting with, because infrastructure puts people to work, and it put businesses to work. Otherwise, if you have infrastructure problems, which we do in America, we keep debating it. And when I came back from China, they don't debate it, they just do it. And that's as simple as that, and we better learn from them. It's, we can learn a lot from them. And that was my opportunity. In 22 years, I think we've done many things. Tax increment financing is a big, why are we using it? Why it's the only economic tool that the city of Chicago has. If we waited for the federal government, none of this we built. Schools, libraries, roads, bridges, CTA structures, all the things that we talk about would never have been built. <laughs> You'd be just talking about it. And you use tax increment financing, which generates Body for infrastructure, schools, business-related improvements, uh, like rehabbing the, uh, the landmark Florsheim Shoe Company warehouse at Belmont and Pulaski as 175 mixed-income residential units. Acquisition and development of Wix Auto Site is a green space. You know things like that. 35 million, uh, 25 million for the new uh, 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 Federico Garcia Lorca Elementary School, which is really important. In small businesses, we have uh, TIF funds for commercial improvements of small businesses to repair industrial property, remodel their facilities. And if, if approximately 15 small businesses up and down this area have received uh, 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 small business uh, uh, grants, which is really important for them. They can't go into the private sector, so they come to the city. And that really improves th their operation of their businesses, which they can't get the money from. And so it's really important. We support businesses, small, medium-sized business, large business in the city of Chicago. And we put a lot of money in training uh, their business. A lot of business come to them. They, they want to hire people but they're not trained and they can't be using their own money so we do a combination they use some money we use some money to train their workers or retrain their workers this is better off than the company closing down we have to move we're going to go where train workforce so we put a lot of money in TIF works and that's where uh, we stimulate uh, training costs uh, for companies located in tax increment financing districts, which we set out, and then very, very helpful to a lot of companies. And that's why a lot of companies have stayed or relocated in the city of Chicago. There are four TIF works projects in the 30th Ward, uh, including one being funded by Pulaski Industrial TIF for about uh, 78,000, Aspira, uh, 3909 West Fullerton for management excellence and youth service and safety training. Young people getting jobs for the first time, and we're really concerned about that. Our schools don't teach uh, 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 vocational training anymore. So how do you get younger people interested, say manufacturing jobs, you know, just just starting out someplace, how do you get that? And so you have to give them opportunities and you have to uh, basically work with not-for-profit organizations in the community uh, so that uh, uh, they can look to uh, future jobs, a beginning jobs, something like that. When they graduate from high school, they're going to college at night or they're going to go on to college, they have to work during the summer. How do they get these jobs if they're not trained? And I think that's very important. I just put a lot of time in education because I firmly believe if you give an edu uh, a quality education to a child, you give them independence for life. Uh, and, and if you don't give it, they fail through the cracks. And, and they can't compete. I really believe it's going to be harder and harder. And that's why I firmly believe in good quality education. It's up to the, up to the, it's up to the family and the community. It's not just up to the school. It's up to the library. It has to be a learning environment. There has to be something in America. Coming back from China, it's a huge learning environment. They go to school six days a week. Six days a week, the children. They go to school from 8 in the morning to about 7 at night. Now think of that. 
and they do cultural programs, sports, because a lot of their parents are working. So like anything else, and parents would come to school at five o'clock and work with the kids. It's amazing, you know, doing their study and everything else. And so you really can learn a lot from, uh, as you travel the world, finding out how important education is. And to me, uh, the two new schools I talked about Federico Garcia Lorca Elementary School, North Grand High School, and 14 uh, improvements in 14 other schools, which is really important, uh, and carrying out that whole commitment. Affordable, new and affordable housing, uh, Madre Unidas, construction, Humboldt Park, and West Town communities. Again, rental units in 11 buildings. So a lot of people can't afford because of you know, uh, changing communities. So we have to be able to keep people who can afford to stay there. They live there all their life, so you want to make sure they can live there or their grandparents or somebody else, and you do all types of housing, grandparents raising grandchildren, uh, uh, families, uh, senior citizens, and so that's all part of uh, taking apartment buildings and, and making sure that they're good quality uh, owners of the apartment buildings and allowing people to move in in affordable uh, 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 housing, which is really important for a lot of people because there's this recession that we have in America. Uh, a lot of apartments, uh, a lot of casinos, apartments, 62 units of high quality housing, uh, and this deals with homeless so a lot of the homeless they used to be just uh, flop houses that's pretty realistic and now there's social services and you're rebuilding someone's lives a lot of veterans are homeless people don't realize that we have a lot a lot of veterans and so we want to rebuild their lives it isn't something they can hang out or something social services they get jobs they be part of the community and of course the bungalow belt which is here throughout the northwest side and southwest side. I grew up in a bungalow and uh, and uh, we had when I look at it we had my parents, my grandparents and three of my brothers and three sisters. So there had to be eleven of us. And I look when I go back there look at a bungalow, I wonder how we ever survived in that bungalow, but <laughs> we all did and we came out well. And uh, and so with the bungalows you have to make their energy efficient and you have to make sure uh, that people they can adapt to the new changes that people have as compared to in the past. And so they put additions on, they fix the roof, they have to do energy savings, things like that. These are part of the great history of the city of Chicago. And, and the sustainable uh, improvements of those are really important. How they can save money, it's really important because uh, I think the whole history of the, the bungalows and two flats are really part of this great great architects and great tradesmen that we had at that time when they built it. And, and the senior suites at Calvin Park incorporates 85 units of senior rental, which is really important because a lot of seniors you know, they moved out of their homes because their family has moved. They can't support their homes. So they want uh, rental uh, uh, units, which is really important for them uh, because uh, it, you know, we owe uh, responsibility and obligation. The human service part of it, uh, the food, uh, host, Greater Chicago Food Depository, uh, both the churches and not-for-profits really work with them about providing people. It's amazing how many people need food. I mean, it's just it's something that America doesn't realize. And here in Chicago, we have a good not-for-profit organization working with the community groups to really provide that. And mobile uh, pantry units as well at many sites uh, in, in the city of Chicago. We served over 18,000 residents from April through September. It's amazing uh, how many residents we served just for they need food immediately. And so that's the other thing. And of course, playgrounds and parks are all part of the great history. Calvin Park, Blackhawk Park, uh, installing an artificial turf courts at three other parks. Uh, the North uh, Pulaski Branch Library, uh, which we're really proud of. And of course, the CTA, as they keep improving the CTA uh, here throughout the city and, and uh, extending services on, on Grand Avenue, Armitage, which is really important. The CATS program is the key. How do you keep out gangs and drugs? You start in the home. Start in the block, you start in the community. You invite them in. They're part of the, they're part of this, you know, they're not strangers. Gang bangers and dope dealers are not strangers. Everybody knows who they are. They're part of someone's family. They're, and so the only way you do it is get people who are really willing to come out and say, with the marches, Ray and Ariel had marched, we marched up and down with the schools and tell people that if your children join gangs in this day and age, they're gonna end up in prison, they're gonna end up dead, or they're gonna end up someplace. And, and it's really sad how people give up their children so quickly and try to blame everyone else, and they should take responsibility of themselves. The police department can only do so much. Uh, they're not the parents, they're not the pastors, they're not psychiatrists, <laughs> they're police officers. They're gonna go home to their families. It's up to the community to take responsibility, and that's what we have to have. It's responsibility in bringing children into the world. And to me, uh, that's the greatest responsibility that we have as adults, 
to take care of our children, our grandchildren, our extended family. And so through all the work that we have accomplished, I, it's the greatest honor that I've had is being mayor of the city of Chicago. I think there is no greater honor uh, to serve the people of the city of Chicago. And what really makes this job are people like yourself who really love your families and love your community, love your churches, and really have done wonderful things that really make a commitment in such a big city, an urban city, they have a feeling that uh, they, an I will spirit, that they really enjoy this great city. With Even though we have, we still have problems, you know, like anything else, but it's the idea that you have to have that. You have to have passion. Passion is part of public service. We're not just a bunch of bureaucrats. You have to have passion. If you don't have passion, uh, then there's nothing to fight for. It's just another day from nine to five. And nothing in my life has been nine to five. It's been seven days a week. And, and which I, you know what, I have no regrets on it. I've enjoyed every minute of it minute every time I've been mayor I've enjoyed all 22 years and that is really a great honor and I thank the people of the city of Chicago for that great honor and to as we move forward uh, to recommit yourself about all the things you've done and all the things you want to do uh, in your family and in your community and I thank you for loving Chicago and thank you for allowing me to be your mayor thank you very much